All right. A bit more about uh, Film Roman. Mm -hmm. um, how were your, sh your shows sold to the networks, aside from the Garfield ones that were pre-sold? Did you actually go in and pitch them yourself? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, I had a team, you know, the, uh, once we started growing, you know, I, I just assembled like a, a team that to kind of go with me and uh, a kind of a business team and then there was a creative team. And uh, so like uh, we, then we started developing our own shows and uh, some of the writers that I was working on one project, like uh, on Bobby's role, they told me that they knew Howie Mandel. So, you know, how, wow, yeah, it's, I've been watching him on uh, I think HBO and he's got does this little character called Bobby. And he says, yeah, you want to talk with him? So they set up a meeting and Howie came in and, and yeah, he seemed interested in doing a series. And so, so we developed it with, with my team there in the studio. We developed a, a presentation and we went to the networks and uh, Margaret Lesh at, uh, at Fox says, you know, I'll buy it, I'll order you know, 13 episodes. And so all of a sudden we were, were you know, doing other things. And uh, then there was another show called Zazu You for Fox. And uh, so they were, all of a sudden we're doing other things and expanding onto uh, uh, other areas besides just Garfield. Although Garfield continued to be the backbone of the studio for, for many years. Was there or is there a, uh, a film Roman style of animation? Disney mm -hmm. had one, Warner Brothers, MGM, some of their companies. Is there Barbera. one? No, uh, and I, I don't want a, uh, our style because I, 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 the way I look at uh, projects, every project has its own identity, has its own look, and its own uh, feel, and and I never believed in doing things uh, by formula or by um, there's a way of doing things. So, so so you design a project to look a certain way, and and characters move the way they're designed. So, so, you, so every show has its own look, its own feel, and uh, I never wanted a, a Hanna Barbera look or a Disney look or, or, or that because all of a sudden you know you're you, you're limited by your own. <laughs> well, now let's get to another big, uh, big mm. show that Film Roman uh, became known for. Mm. In 1990, you became involved with The Simpsons. Yep. Mm. How did that come about? your involvement uh, with this project? Well, uh, what happened was that uh, The Simpsons uh, first started out as a little bit on the Tracy Ullman show, a little minute, two minute little segment. And it was produced by Klasky Chupo, it's uh, another studio, the uh, animation studio. And, uh, and w one day I got a call from Fox asking me if I would be interested in, uh, in taking over doing the, the Simpsons and I said yeah that, that, I says, but it's already being produced by uh, by another studio and in fact they're friends of mine and he says well you know we're we're, we're having problems they were having uh, some kind of difficulties with them and they were going to take the show away from them so I says well you know whether you want to work on it we're still going to take the show away from them and uh, so if you're interested you know we'd like for you to work on it so I called up Gabor Chupo, you know, who was my friend, and says, I understand that, uh, that Fox is, uh, wants to take the show away from you. He says, yeah, he says, They're, but if anybody's going to do it, I you know, uh, hope that you do it. So after that, I went to Fox and said, okay, fine. We'll, we'll. I, I just had a, you know, I didn't want uh, people to think that I went behind their back and took the show away from them. But once I talked with Gabor, you know, he, and so anyway, it turned out to be very good for us because uh, the, we took it over. It was hard like in the second or third season. And uh, so what we did, we more or less kind of defined the characters and you know, kind of really, because uh, uh, to me, I can always spot the early shows and the, the later one. To me, it's uh, very, very definite. And the nice thing also was uh, that uh, we got the artists, the directors, that had been on the show from the beginning, they came over. And uh, so we didn't have to reinvent anything, you know, it was just a matter of just giving the creative team, you know, a place to, to work and uh, 
Uh, and so, uh, again, uh, again, nice areas to work, and uh, you know, and uh, the treat the directors, you know, uh, with respect, and so all of them. You know, at first they were kind of wary. Where, where are we? But uh, they grew in, into the uh, into the studio very, very quickly, and uh, really talented, really, really talented uh, you know, people there. What exact changes did you make with the animation? As you said, there's definitely a difference in yeah. the first few seasons and the mm -hmm. rest of it. What what change was made? Well, I think it was uh, uh, more in defining the characters visually, because um, the writing uh, has always been very, very sharp. And and uh, uh, David Silberman, who was like the lead director on, on the on the Simpsons, he went through and, and did a, a fine tune the characters, you know, and expressions and the drawing and and uh, working with uh, Matt Groening. Uh, because Matt again, you know, is, was so defensive about how these characters, you know, how you know, uh, has a, every right to you know, protect his characters, and uh, and so working with David, you know, they fine tuned those characters really, really. And so so I mean, I, to me, it, it's just a, a line there where uh, you can tell the stuff that we did and the stuff that was done before. How involved is Matt Groening in the, in the well, he, series? He, well, he used to be, uh, I don't know how, he, how much he is now, but uh, he used to go through all the model sheets and make, uh, you know, any new character that was used, you know, uh, he'd look at the models that were done by the, our model department, and he'd say, no, the upper lip has to be this or this or whatever, you know, and, and never would do the hands like this. So, so he would kind of go over the, the drawing and and so we'd incorporate all of his notes into uh, into the way the characters were drawn, because you know that defines the character. Now, what were your responsibilities, or what was your involvement with the series? Uh, I, I, I wasn't involved uh, in, in any part of the production. I was uh, uh, by this time I was the executive producer, and I was giving uh, uh, the unit a place to work and giving them all the benefits of whatever. Um, uh, uh, help we could give them to produce a show, so I, I just uh, supplied the, the the space and uh, whatever else is needed to produce a show. So I, I am the studio that's that's uh, producing it, and I you know, give them all the the benefits of whatever they need. How closely did you work with Jim Brooks? Uh, not not at all, because yeah, he, he's kind of. Um, removed from the whole thing. He's got, uh, he has people that uh, are assigned to the show that are the showrunners, and they're the ones that uh, are in charge of the show. And uh, they're the ones that uh, that we dealt with. And, uh, uh, you know, then he's got his own company that does live action movies and other, <laughs> other series and stuff. So uh, uh, he, he kind of looks at it from, from, the, <laughs> from the big picture. Whereas the day-to-day -day stuff is uh, handled by uh, by the guys that he's assigned to the show. How would you describe the premise of the series? Uh, again, uh, I think it, it, it's uh, a family that uh, uh, it's just out of tune with the the real world, and well, not only the family, but I think the whole world. You know, you, you look at all those characters; they're they're uh, caricatures of reality, and, and I think that's what makes it funny. The, 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 there's this uh, you relate to those characters because you know people like that but when you see them they're cartoons they're, they're caricatures of what reality is and, and uh, there is a non-functional or dysfunctional family uh, the, the father is you know <laughs> totally irresponsible the, the son the, o the only redeeming person in that show is the mother she, she's a mother that keeps everything together. And there's some good messages there. You know, people complained early on about the bad influences, but there were good messages there about uh, family, about uh, responsibility and everything. And, uh, and I think when you do it as caricature, as, a, as a pushing the reality, it, it, it's funnier. It makes more of an impact because you're entertained but but there's a, a good solid underlying message in, in the stories. 
How important do you think the, uh, the voice actors are in the success? Of well, uh, uh, critically, I mean, the, uh, absolutely uh, important because they define the character, and th that's who you uh, uh, who you relate to. And and uh, and when you tune in to see the show, you 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 have certain expectations, and and, and those voices define the character and so they're living up to your expectations so that, that it's critical because you know they're, they're playing against each other and and in animation those voices uh, make uh, even more important well now let's talk about some of the details of the production mm -hmm. uh, that from from uh, your standpoint mm -hmm. what what parts of it do you when do you come in and come in and see what kind of what they're doing do you mm -hmm. keep an eye at all on on each episode's production, uh, uh, do you do you kind of you know kind of keep a nose in there just to kind of in case? It, it depends. Uh, on the first season, I would work very closely with the directors with everything. Once we sold the show, uh, make sure that everything's on, uh, on 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 the same direction that everybody's agreed on. Like if it's a second or third season, everybody knows their job already. Uh, that and, and unless there's something really major. That uh, then uh, I would step in and you know either replace people or do whatever. But uh, if it's running smoothly, I mean, that, I mean everybody knows the responsibility. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do, and and so I just get out of their way and let them do their job because there's nothing worse than having somebody second guessing everybody all the time, and uh, and and, and uh, destroying uh, morale. And uh, you know everybody feels that uh, their input is not appreciated. So when people do are doing their job. And, and doing a good job, then you know, there's no need to second guess people. How much of the animation was produced overseas? Uh, for a series, um, the, the anim actual animation production is produced overseas. The pre production is done here. And the pre production consists of uh, the story, uh, the voice recording, uh, storyboarding, designing the characters, what do they look like, you know, turnaround, and everything. Uh, the direction, the timing, you know, working by the exposure sheets, how fast things move, and and uh, and, and so uh, the background, the color, and uh, so you define all the creative elements here. Then you ship it overseas, and, uh, and then they just follow your instructions and they they make it move. Uh, and again, it, because of all the work that is being done, uh, all the all the work that's being produced. It, it would be impossible to do that much work here in, 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 in the States because there's not that many people available to as animators and everything. And because of the having the a Far East uh, safety valve, it created more work for everybody in the business. So it, it just, uh, you know, at one, at one point at Film Roman, we, were, uh, we had 10 series going on in one season. And uh, that's a tremendous, tremendous amount of work. And uh, again, uh, if it, we had to do it all here with animated, it would have been impossible because you know, there's not that many people around available. So, uh, so it's a, a good safety belt. And then uh, working with the uh, Asian studios, that would, what we would do is then we would send one of our employees over there to live in Korea or Taiwan or wherever the show would go, or they would be there working with that, their people, uh, their artists, on a daily basis and talking to us every day so that we you know, are in control all the time. How far ahead would an episode be produced uh, from its broadcast date? Well, hopefully by the, when uh, uh, the show st starts airing in, uh, in September, you've got uh, maybe uh, five or six shows already you know, waiting uh, to be delivered because you're going to have one a week, and uh, uh, but hopefully, you know, you want you know five or so like that uh, because you might have some hang up in the delivery scale where somebody might miss a delivery from overseas and uh, you don't have a show, so you already have one to fill in because uh, so that's what the uh, uh, you know. You, want, you don't want to get caught up in, uh, in missing air dates. 
what would a typical production uh, budget be for an episode of The Simpsons? Would that would it, and would it change or with current uh, steady? Yeah, well, it, it, Simpsons is, is fairly expensive. I don't think that they're a good example of a, what a typical um, primetime show is because of its success and the higher expectations and the fact that it's done very well in syndication. It, the, the budgets are a little higher, uh, but um, uh, let's see, uh, I, I haven't been involved in the, in the Simpsons day-to-day -day, uh, business part uh, in about three years, so I really can't uh, say what it is now. But it, it probably is uh, oh, between five, 600000 I would say. For for, for uh, the just the animation part of it, then there's you know, that doesn't include the writing or the or the voices or anything like that, because each episode probably costs uh, over a million dollars, a million two or something like that. How involved was uh, the Fox Network in overseeing the production? They have a, a certain interest in making sure that oh, you know, the level <laughs> yeah. stays high, oh, yeah. especially given yeah. the syndication. Oh, yeah. Um, was there any interference on their part, or did they just kind of stay involved? No, no they, well, they, again, they get involved when they perceive a problem. And if, because uh, uh, we're in constant contact with Fox uh, uh, from a creative point all the time, uh, with the showrunners and everything. So they, they always, it, it's, a, it's a very tightly produced show, and uh, where uh, it, it's in constant flux all the time. They're adding new lines. If, if they feel something works better than what they have, they'll, uh, they're always fine-tuning it. And uh, uh, so, but unless Fox thinks that there's a problem, you know, they, uh, they'll let you do your job. Have they had to step in very many times no, that you no, know of? No, no, no. They, they, we had, we've had a very good relationship with them since... Uh, after The Simpsons, then we got uh, uh, The Critic. Uh, we did that for a couple of seasons, and then after that we got uh, uh, King of the Hill, which uh, was also, you know, it's been a very good show for Fox. So so we have a, a fairly good tra track record with them. We have a, uh, there's a good comfort level on both sides. How does a series maintain an audience of both? kids and adults, like we were mm -hmm. saying earlier about Garfield yeah, yeah. being, you know, popular with kids and adults. Mm -hmm. Why do you think The Simpsons uh, is a, is, has, that, has that dual audience? Well, I, I think, see, the, the, the Simpsons are written more for an adult audience because it's a primetime show, you know, it's not a, a Saturday morning show. So it has to have more uh, of an adult sensibility. And, uh, and being animation uh, and I think makes it appealing to kids anyway, especially when you have a, a kid that's kind of like a, a Bart, and uh, so kids kind of relate to Bart as kind of like the, the little um, rascal kind of a kid who kind of uh, uh, always uh, is not, does what's not expected of him kind of a thing. And so uh, I think uh, kids relate to, to kind of an antisocial <laughs> character. And, uh, but again, and the parents, you know, the adults just like the, the, the theme of the, the, the different characters because they're all appealing characters. I mean, through the years, I mean, they, I don't know, probably have uh, recurring characters, might be in, uh, uh, over 100 characters that, that, that they use that come in and out uh, that have been added through, through the years. So it, it's, uh, it, 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 it's a real world that they live in, but again, it's a kind of a dysfunctional world. How has the success of The Simpsons um, affected the proliferation of other primetime animated series, such as mm. Futurama, King of the Hill, mm. South Park? Yeah, it, it helped tremendously, because prior to that, uh, people would say that uh, animation doesn't work for primetime. And, 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 and to me, I could never understand that, because uh, I think they had tried some shows that say animation failed, and, it, and so animation doesn't work. But if, if a live action show failed, they didn't say, well, live action doesn't work because you know, we had to cancel a live action show. They, but it, it's a matter of understanding how this way of telling stories. And, and again, if, if, if you have good characters 
and good stories. I think that's what people want. And uh, some of the other things that have been done, that they, didn't have, they had neither of those. Uh, the last uh, really good primetime uh, uh, series have been the, the Flintstones way back. Uh, and, uh, and again, that's good characters and good stories, you know, good, uh, and, and so it, people forget that just having some gimmick or some kind of a, a funny takeoff on something is enough. That's not enough. You know, you don't, you, you don't do it on gimmicks or, or technology or anything like that. Well, let's talk about some of the other projects that Bill mm -hmm. Roman has worked on throughout the 90s. Um, one, which was actually right before the 90s, in 88, was uh, Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. Right. What was this project? Uh, that, uh, at the time, I was uh, on the board of uh, governors of the TV Academy. And uh, uh, the, uh, the Academy came up with this idea on how to, uh, uh, to do something about uh, drugs for kids, uh, about uh, uh, maybe... Uh, doing something to warn kids, to make them aware of the dangers of drugs and stuff. So uh, they organized, the, the TV Academy did, uh, with all the networks uh, uh, and all the cartoon uh, shows that each network had, to create one show with, with all these characters and, and interwoven in the, in the story. And our character, our contribution was Garfield. And uh, and to run on all three networks at the same time on a Saturday. And, and it, it really was a, a great idea, and I, th I think it worked tremendously because it, it got a lot of publicity. And then uh, I, th I think those uh, tapes were made, uh, were made available to schools and other uh, entities that uh, uh, had uh, you know, interest in, in the topic. So it, it was a, a real nice, and, and, and it was not an easy thing to do because when you have all, uh, all of these different entities protecting their characters and who are they going to be working with and how they're going to be tied and who's going to be doing this or that, I mean, there was a lot of uh, resistance uh, from, from a lot of people until they were reassured that now the, the, their characters would be treated with the same respect that uh, they, they normally were. But uh, I, I, I think it was a very successful uh, attempt. Uh, 